Thank you. And um, so that I won't forget later, I want to apologize for Friday. Uh, some of you were going, coming to the Zoom community meeting we had after the morning sitting. And I set up the Zoom room with the wrong account. So we have a 100-person account and a 500-person account. And I used a 100-person account so that some of you tried to get in and, um, and the room was full. <clears throat> so I'm very sorry for that and I missed having you there. And uh, the first chance we have, maybe in a few weeks, on a Friday, we'll do another one, and I'll be sure to do it the right way. And uh, for next, for, to, for this next two weeks, I'm also teaching a two-week retreat. And so, when this finishes at 7:45, I, I need to get ready for the for the retreat each day. So the body. So the theme for this week is mindfulness of the body. And uh, so over these last three weeks, it's been three important areas of mindfulness. Mindfulness of breathing, mindfulness of thinking, and mindfulness of emotion. And now we come to mindfulness of the body. And perhaps one of the rationales for that sequence during this this time, this last month, is that... um, Everything we learn about mindfulness of breathing, thinking, and emotions sets the stage for to really be able to enter into mindfulness of the body. Uh, uh, for the Buddha, mindfulness of the body was one of the most important practices. He emphasized it tremendously. He talked about how much goodness, so many benefits that come from mindfulness of the body that it, uh, it's a protection from all kinds of unsavory forces that come our way or arise within us. It's a, um, it, it's a, 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 a incubator for some of the best qualities we have, the wholesome qualities we have. It's the, where we can discover the path of the Dharma that unfolds, the deepening and opening of the path and the Buddha even talked about awakening itself uh, happens. Uh, uh, he said it this way, that there is no awakening without there being mindfulness of the body. There is no experience of the deathless without mindfulness of the body. So some people find it perplexing that the body is emphasized so much. For some people, the body is just a hunk of meat that we it's useful for carrying us around. And the body is kind of senseless and some pointless and senseless. And, um, but as the meditation practice deepens, um, uh, the, the body becomes more and more, it makes more and more sense uh, in the sense that um, it becomes more sensitive. And the heightened sensitivity of the body, this heightened attunement with the body provides a tremendous amount of information, a freeing of energy, of vitality, a, a, um, a real steeper sensitivity to where freedom can be found, where clinging and contraction exists and how to release it. The, um, uh, what's very interesting about the Buddha's teachings on the body is that um, when he talks about the body, he's not talking about the physical body in and of itself, but rather the physical body uh, in how it's experienced. And uh, it's the experienced body that we're we're practicing with in meditation, not strictly speaking the physical body. And so it's the sensate body or the somatic body, the conscious body, the animated body, um, the contrast that the that's uh, and it doesn't do it explicitly, but one set of teachings, the contrast that Buddha seems to give is between a corpse that has no sensations and no thoughts, no not impacted by any means uh, 
it's not conscious, there's no consciousness there in the corpse. Um, and that all the sensations that we experience, all the subjective experience to the bodies we have, are there because we're alive. They're part of our animated system, the vitality of our nerve, nerves, nervous system that we have. The, uh, and so, from a Buddhist point of view, the mind and body are not so separate. Perhaps the, the, the mind spreads out throughout the whole body because it's the, how we're conscious, how we're aware of the body, which is the body that we actually can know. Uh, maybe a researcher, a scientist, a doctor might know something about your physical body, but from the inside out, how we experience our body, how we feel and sense our body, uh, is a subjective experience, deep subjective experience. Of course, we can live in our heads, live in our thoughts and ideas, and because of that, <clears throat> have an, a, a, treat the body as an object, think about parts of our body almost like they're external from us or there's a thing out there, we think about them in the control tower and, um, and we have all kinds of ideas about the body and um, we don't like parts of it, we like parts of it, we have concerns with it and it's treated a little bit like an, an object, a thing that we can think about. And, um, uh, and it's uh, back in the world of aboutness, we talked about some weeks ago, what thinking is often about aboutness, we're thinking about the body and therefore a little bit removed from the body itself, from the subjective experience of the body. And meditation is to drop into more and more deeply the subjective experience of the body, how, how the mind is aware of the body, the conscious body. And it turns out there's a world of difference between the body that we're aware of from the inside out and the body that we're not aware of. The body that we're mindful of, the breathing that we're mindful of is very different than the breathing that we're not mindful of. That uh, it's almost like we have two bodies. The body that we go about without much consciousness about, attention to, without much being centered in the subjective experience of it, and the body that uh, we're very conscious, where consciousness, awareness suffuses the body and we're centered and aware of what goes on in the body. It's so radically different, these two modes. It's almost like we have two separate bodies. And I kind of believe that to some degree they operate differently. The more conscious we are and relaxed we are, the whole system works in a more healthy, harmonious way. For the purposes of meditation, <clears throat> this deep subjective experience of the body that's possible is um, uh, starts uh, uh, giving us the the feedback loop or the understanding of how we're changing, uh, how we're developing, how meditation deepens, because the experience of the body is not a fixed thing. The way that we have the subjective experience of our body is intimately connected to the state of our mind. The more concentrated we are, the experience of the body changes. People who don't meditate might feel or sense their body as a solid hunk of, you know, hardness or something. But as, uh, and clear boundaries, but as the mind gets concentrated and still, more mindful and more sensitive, the body becomes more fluid, more receptive, more softer, more spacious, um, more open in a fantastic kind of way. And uh, it stops being um, hard or fixed. One of the things that was interesting for me in my early years of meditation was um, my body would get very relaxed and soft in meditation. and uh, But there would be some little place, some little lump of hardness, of tension somewhere in my body. And I would go over there and bring attention to that and then with time, it would begin to dissolve as well. But it was like I was going through the layers in the body of where tensions were held. When I first started meditating, I had a lot of tension in my body. My, humic, my stomach was always tense. My uh, jaws were tense. My eyes were kind of tense. My shoulders were much higher than they are now. And, um, and, uh, and so as I began softening, 
I started seeing the kind of more more subtle places of holding. But hold, and then they would dissolve. And so as they dissolved, the sense of the body being hard, lumpy, and uh, kind of receded, and the body started feeling like a dynamic, fluid, open field of energy with lots of space. Is that experience of the body more or less accurate than the experience of the body we have walking around being tense and upset and and feeling hard and boundaried? Um, They're all just products of the mind to a big degree, the quality, the state of the mind. And um, one is not better, one is not, you know, I don't know, right or wrong in a sense, but one is conducive to greater freedom and compassion and love. This ability for the body not to be tight and be armored uh, opens up so much potential that's needed to awaken in order to this for this path of practice to unfold. So one of the in this last guided meditation I did, one of the primary points I was trying to make is that the more relaxed the body can be, the more receptive it is. And this idea of meditating with receptivity is a very important quality for meditation. Um, uh, to meditate with assertiveness, like, you know, I'm going to make something happen, I'm going to get something to happen, and it's all about me kind of controlling and directing my, my meditation. It tends to create more tension or limitation. It doesn't create the room for the receptivity. To, to focus instead, not on being, you know, assertively focused, but to focus on being receptive, to be relaxed. And then as we get concentrated, like for example on the breathing, it's a receptive concentration and it's a settling on it. The word that often is translated as concentration in the teachings of the Buddha, uh, sambahita, different than samadhi. Um, But often they're very closely connected and so the translators will translate it as concentration. It literally means to settle. And so there's a settling that can happen. We're receptive to relaxation, receptive to settling, receptive to take in and experience what goes on. And in relationship to breathing, we're receptive to the influence that breathing has on us. Breathing is not a neutral thing, it's not just a mechanical thing. It's at the nexus of so much of our whole life. And, um, And to sit and be receptive to allow yourself to be receptive to the influence breathing has on you. Allow the breathing to condition your body, to open your body, and to begin showing you more and more how much uh, and how wonderful the conscious body is, the somatic body, the body body that's suffused with awareness from the inside out, a place to rest, a place to trust, and a place that greater and greater freedom can arise. So thank you for this, and uh, that's the theme for this week, mindfulness of the body.